All right, welcome back to the weekly walk and talk then. Although again, this week we will be talking, not so much walking because it is raining outside. And also I gave my professional uh, gear to my wife. She's in London this week. We'll probably touch upon that at the end if you stick around that long. But I'm laughing before we even start this video, just going through my notes and looking at all the articles that I you know, read and the videos I watched this week and all the news anchors reporting. And it is so ridiculous. It is getting so hilarious and ridiculous that it's baffling to me. It's just mind blowing. So let's look at the first one then. Um, you won't even believe this, how crazy this, this, um, this one is. It's on a lot of news channels at the moment. Another, this is the headline. Another problem, trash found on Mars. How? And then they're all talking about how can we get rid of this, this trash? How can we dispose of this trash? Let's also talk about a problem facing Mars. And that too is thanks to humans. The red planet is being littered. NASA has found trash on Mars. Who is going all the way to Mars to dump trash? Our next report tells you. Some of the comments, you know, you always see comments below videos and on the, the news websites. Um, let me read this one out to you. Who is going to take responsibility for this trash? Question mark, exclamation mark. Who's going to pay for the cleanup operation? How will we even get people up there to do this? Oh, you know, people are really freaking out over this stuff and I'm watching it and I'm trying my hardest not to laugh at these, at these uh, comments. People are really getting heated over some of this stuff it is uh it's absolutely bizarre so let's go through some of the bizarre ones first and then we'll get on to some more serious topics science news a ufo would stress out a bear i'm gonna put that on screen now no this is not a joke this is an actual article i read it i thought maybe it's sort of some sort of a a joke maybe someone's just I don't know, randomly posted. I, I couldn't figure it out and I read it. No, this is genuine. What is it with all of this space stuff at the moment uh, and everything on the news? UFOs and all this kind of, you know, unusual talk. Why are they not talking about real science-based stuff? Space weather, how the sun and the space weather may be impacting things on Earth. No, no, none of that. None of that science, no. Um, UFOs and a bear. Yeah, this is what we're we're dealing with. Next weird one this week, photo of Jungkook. I have no idea who this guy is, by the way, but he's apparently a Korean pop star or something like that. Eating pizza, so this guy's eating pizza, causes pizza orders to collapse in South Korea. Right, this was this big thing. It's number one trending on social media. Number one, j just think about this for a moment. The world we're now living in, number one trending is some guy eating a pizza and then people try and figure out what pizza he was eating. They find out and then they order it and cause the system to, to crash. Yeah, just stop and think about that for a moment and how uh, weird that is. Um, next one, Trudeau. test. <laughs> this one made me laugh. Trudeau test positive for COVID again for the fifth time after meeting Biden. I thought that was really funny. After meeting Biden, there was a couple of... Uh, finger pointing there towards uh, Biden. I feel sorry for Biden at the moment. He's getting absolutely destroyed. If he's not getting blamed for giving Trudeau COVID, he's getting blamed for something else. So what else has he been clobbered for at the minute? Um, not just the Republicans who are just destroying him at every, you know, every turn, but now the Democrats are trying to go after him as well. It is painful to watch this guy speaking. I watched one of his speeches just last night and I just thought, I, I don't even know what he's saying most of the time. I don't think he knows what he's saying a lot of the a lot of the time. But let me read out this statement when he actually came into office. No more subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal land. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill. Period. End. You can just imagine him saying that, can't you? Now Biden hits out at the energy industry and blames them for not producing enough. Chevron hits back at Biden saying that he's the one to blame because he won't let them drill. So here was their uh, official statement then. 
Unfortunately, what we have seen since January 2021 are policies that send a message that the administration aims to impose obstacles to our industry delivering energy resources the world needs. And I would completely agree with that statement from Chevron. What have we been talking about? The ESG mandates. If you think Joe Biden is really in control of all of this, then you've got another thing coming because he's not. And um, I, I just think, you know, people are in denial at the moment. I really do feel that they're in denial. So many people just keep saying, Neil, everything will go back to normal. You know, you, you're blowing this out of proportion. Everything's fine. We're, we're going to go back to normal. We're not going back to normal, my friends. I, I've been saying this for so long now. We are not going back to normal. There's actually, I was looking up what this could be because I wanted to try and figure out as like I do with all things, a methodology, some sort of scientific process behind it. So I looked up what could be going on here. And what I stumbled upon was the five stages of grief. So let me read these out to you. Stage number one is denial. Key one here. Number two is anger. Number three is bargaining. Number four is depression. And number five is acceptance. So what we're actually seeing right now in the world is and we'll use an example of me and, and you if you're a subscriber here. We have gone through these five stages. We've gone through, you know, the, the denial at the start, the anger, bargaining, depression, etc. We've gone through it all. And now we've reached the acceptance phase. And what are we doing? We're taking action. We're taking relevant action, knowing now what is happening in the world and the craziness and how people are just losing it, completely losing their minds. So we're doing that. But what you'll notice is the majority of the world are still stuck in denial. So even though they can see everything collapsing around them, they're stuck. They're stuck in denial and they think that everything's going to go back to normal. What else is happening? Anger, stage two. You've seen a lot of people in anger. And these are the people you may or may not have seen on the streets rioting and looting and burning down businesses and, you know, fighting and uh, argumentative at work, fighting with it. This is the, the next phase is the anger. Then we're seeing the bargaining. We're, we're seeing this here. Depression, mental health is through the roof, uh, absolutely through the roof. And um, I get another thing Biden said that made me laugh on his recent speech just the other night was he said, we need more mental health. We need more of these problems to be uh, uh, in the world. I think he meant to say to be solved in the world. But um, anyway, that was another one that made me laugh that he said. But yeah, we're going through these these five stages here. And I think a lot of people are in depression. They really are. It is through the roof. But again, the, the good thing for, for us, many of us watching this and, and involved in this channel, is that we have reached acceptance and we are now taking the relevant action to get through this, which I think is really important. We've got to take these actions. We've got to push through this now. But um, one other thing that I find really bizarre is that I have these conversations with people and they say, Neil, you, you know, they use the usual stuff, all oh, conspiracy theorist and blah, you know, boring. It's all boring to me now, but they use this stuff. And I say, so let me just get this straight. You think everything that's going on in the UK, USA, Eurozone, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, all these things that seem to be matching and mirroring one of the crisis all at the same time, pretty much in exactly the same way. And these people are part of the WEF, the leaders, young leaders program, etc. You think this is just a coincidence. I, I just want to check I'm getting that straight. You think that's just a coincidence. All those things I just talked about. And they say, yeah, yeah, you're just making this stuff up. Everything's going to be fine. It's going back to normal. Forget it, guys. I, I get the I see your comments and I get all the messages over Patreon and you know, some of you send me private messages on Patreon, things like that. Um, in the forum, in our forum, you know, I'm in there every day. I read the messages and the posts. You're not going to, because this is a common theme I'm seeing. How can I get people on board? How can You're not going to get them on board. If they are stuck in denial, they are not going to move. You are wasting your time. Just focus on you, focus on your family, focus on doing the preps that you need to make. Because when all this comes down, it is going to be absolutely biblical. It is going to be insane when all of this comes down. Make sure that you've got your preps ready. And I really do mean that.
And remember, we were talking about the UK government announcing we're probably going to have energy rationing towards the end of the year. So the mornings and evenings when there won't be any electricity available or it will be spread out between different regions. Well, now Australia, again, coincidence, <laughs> has followed suit and they've just made an announcement. And again, this is actually similar to what Germany did as well. If you remember Germany, there's a couple of other EU nations where the government's actually said, we recommend you start rationing, so self-rationing yourself now off of energy. And now we're seeing this all over. A lot of countries are following suit. And uh, the thing that makes me laugh with Australia is theirs was really ridiculous. They said, start turning out the lights now, getting used to not having lights. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Who needs lights? I mean, when you're at, you know, at home at night time, you sat there trying to cook the dinner or eat the dinner around the di dining table. Who needs lights? I mean, seriously, what do we need lights for? Why were they even invented in the first place? Most useless invention I've ever heard of. Lights. Yet, yeah, do you know what we should do? I know. Let's all crack out the candles again. Yeah, because that will work perfectly. Let's all get out candles and uh, just put candles all around the house. Especially if you've got little kids running around. Definitely you want to... You want to have candles all over the place. Yeah, yeah, great, uh, great idea. And then the fire trucks, when everything starts burning down, they probably won't even come out to you because they can't afford the fuel to put in the fire truck. Um, crazy. Another article that's uh, been out this week then, Gatwick, so London Gatwick, cancels flights. Now, what did we talk about last week? Or what did I talk about, should I say? how the uh, aviation industry apparently, apparently causes more uh, CO2 and, and, you know, all this sort of stuff than all other industries combined. That took some serious backlash when I, I said that. I was really surprised. So many people unsubscribed. I mean, hundreds of people unsubscribed. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. No such thing as the grand solar minimum. Yeah, of course, there's no such thing as the grand solar minimum, the GSM. Um, of course, the, the, the sea levels can go up 100 feet in the next 20 years. Of course, they could with the temperatures. I mean, some of this stuff is nuts. But yeah, people were upset that I said there's no way the aviation industry causes more CO2 emissions than all the other industries combined. There's just no way. But people honestly believe it because it was in the media. They believe that. So natural gas, oil. Uh, factories in China and India, all, all these things, everything combined. That's just a couple of percentage points there. Everything combined isn't more than the airline industry. This is what I mean. I'm, I'm worried about the, the sort of logic and common sense of people now. I really am. So let's look at this more laterally, more logically here. What is more likely going on here? Oh, it's raining pretty hard now. Hopefully uh, the audio isn't picking it up. But look, but what could be the real reason that all these airlines all around the world, it seems to be at the moment, are having problems? Well, let's look at two things, because there is one very rational explanation here. Number one is simply that they've been told they've got to get their emissions down. ESG mandates. That's it. So that's one reason. But I think there's another reason as well. And that is over the last two years, if you remember, I talked about the deflation within the airline industry and pricing and flights. And, things. and do you remember that flight I took? Well, there's only, what, less than a dozen people on a 747. I was just sat there on my own, me and my wife flying to L.A. Um, last year, early last year. But think about it like this. The airlines laid off all their staff. The airlines put in all these mandates. If you didn't get your, you know, your shots um, that you couldn't fly or you couldn't be cabin crew and you couldn't be all this. They just laid all these staff off. And now they want everyone back really quickly. Well, those people, it's not just what, what you think they just sat at home, just watching TV, lying there on the sofa. No, of course not. They went into other jobs. They had bills to pay. They had to do other things. So now trying to get all these people back is not quite as easy. And would I go back if I were that person? No way. Because what's going to happen is, yes, you're going to have it really busy through the summer like we're seeing. And this was obvious how they didn't prepare for the busyness now in these airports with these airlines. I don't know. It's the first thing I would have thought of. Locked down for two years. No one could travel internationally. And then, oh, hold on. Everyone, everything's been lifted. People are going to rush back and fly. We better get the staff. No, no, no. Let's just not do any of that. Let's just leave it as it is. 
I mean, it makes no sense at all. So now, of course, they're doing the complete opposite thing. They're rushing out and getting all these new staff and training people, and it's taking ages to train people. So they're getting all these new people in just when we're about to go into recession, just as we're going into the end of the, the summer by the time everything's done and you know everything's ready to go. So they're going to have too many staff again. These airlines, gosh, their profitability, their earnings are going to be very interesting as we go into the end of the year. Yes, I know everyone's buying the airline stock right now. I'm not buying any airline stock, let me tell you. So what if the earnings are strong at the moment? They're going to be. But then once you go towards the end of the year, you're going to see travel drop off a cliff because people are just not going to have the money to be able to travel, let alone fill up their car and put food on the table and you know they're gonna, their lights are going to be turned out for them they haven't even got a choice you know oh we'll turn out the lights off oh, can't already turned out government did it for us uh, what else have we got then tens of thousands of cattle or thousands i'm not quite sure mysteriously die in a heat wave i don't know if you've seen this video doing the rounds at the moment but when i saw that i just i, I had to watch it a couple of times to just really understand what was going on there for cattle to just suddenly Die. Of course, you know what they blamed it on? Climate change. Abbott baby formula plant closed again, just as it's back up and running. This time from flooding and still no hope in sight for women's sanitary products in the United States. They just can't seem to get a break at the moment over in the USA. If it's not baby formula, it's women's products. And last one then, 40 thousand railway workers set to strike next week in the united kingdom to paralyze the travel networks and uh, let me wrap up from the start of the video then so my wife Kristen is in london at the moment she said to me do you want to come with me do you want to fly to london and uh, spend a few days because she's got all this she's got so much work there the next few days and i said yeah yeah let me let me think about that do I want to go to London, one of the busiest cities in the world, with all this craziness going on right now? Or would I rather sit at home in the countryside, enjoy the fresh, clean air, nothing to worry about, five minutes from the beach, and just enjoy myself? Or do I want to go to London? Yeah, I think I, think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay home. So that's where Kristen is um, this week. Yeah, but overall, just a crazy, crazy week yet again, my friends. I uh, just want to say thank you again for all of your support, especially if you're a subscriber here and Patreon members and for using the Buy Me A Coffee link below. I do really appreciate it. It's enabled me not to put sponsors on the videos this month, which has been great. So yeah, I appreciate everything that you, you do and supporting this channel here, especially Patreon. Even if you're just level one Patreon, just a few dollars a month, it really just helps to keep everything going, supporting it, especially as I left all my other work and businesses now, so I could devote my time to you here to actually make sure that all of us are prepared for what's coming because you're never gonna hear any of the stuff I talked about today, the craziness of it on the mainstream media ever. Um, I mean, what else can we say about it? It's nuts. We're just living in this mad world now. It's, it's funny how everyone used to laugh about George Orwell's 1984. And yet we're now living in it. What's up is down and what's down is up. What's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. Yeah. Crazy. Hey. All right. That's it for today and this week. I'll see you again next week. I hope you enjoyed the videos this week and over the last month. Uh, take care. God bless you and your families and I'll speak to you very soon.